With the amazing bike lifts out there with super nice features, most of them are very expensive. So I went for the cheapest one to see how it holds up during the BMW build. How we're gonna do this is I'm gonna unpack it now and maybe assemble it. I don't know what's in the box yet. And then use it for a while and give you feedback in a few months once I actually know if it's money well spent or if it's something more along the lines, buy cheap, buy twice. So this is the main lift and that comes pre-assembled. What you do get is a little socket that goes on here. With this one, you can adjust the height of the lift. And then the other thing that comes with the lift are these two mounting brackets, basically. And you drip rest the bottom frame tubes on here. But I think I'm not gonna use that. So let me show you on the BMW here. The lower frame runs along this side underneath the cylinder heads, but below that there's still the oil pan. So this is the lowest point, and this is probably the point where the lift is gonna rest against. That's why I can't use these little mounting brackets, but I have to use the plate. So in order to protect that, Even though this is the cheapest bike lift that I could find on the internet that was able to lift the 200 kilograms of the BMW, what gives me hope that this is actually a relatively good product, or at least not bad, is that I found it in so many other shops for way more than I have paid. So sometimes with these white label products, you can actually get away buying the cheaper options. And I hope this is the case with this. Now that I've just built this movable workbench from Meta, I'm actually very happy that I went for a slim profile lift. It doesn't have wheels or an hydraulic lifting system. The bike will still be movable when it's on the bench, which is super nice because otherwise I would have gone for a much higher price lift. But if you don't want to spend 300, 400 euros for a high quality lift, you end up with something for 150 bucks that has tiny wheels and the hydraulic is bad. I had one of those before and it just wasn't possible to move the bike around without the wheels getting stuck on something and the hydraulic broke after a few months. That's why I'm excited to see how this lift will perform. So I now start working on the BMW and see you in a few weeks once I actually know how the lift holds up. It's now more than six months later and I guess it's time for a verdict. I did have a lot of time to test the lift out and we got quite a bit done on the BMW. I've built custom fenders for the front and the rear and I had to adjust the rear one <laughs> quite a few times. We have the headlight installed, the forks are lower, so a lot of things have changed on the bike and with all of those projects I cranked the lift up and down a lot of times so it definitely went through its paces and I can say I didn't expect much but it surprised me. For its price tag, this lift is so good. Look at this. Look at how stable the bike is on the lift. Even with the lift fully extended, the BMW is super stable on there. But do this at your own risk. I never had to use straps once just to check the rear tire clearance, which I noticed that it wasn't enough kind of a bad day. The best thing about this lift is how stable it is. But then also, since you don't have any hydraulics, you get a very durable lift that is still super simple to move the bike up and down with. You don't really need a lot of strength to move the bike. And yeah, I'm just very, very surprised. So if you want to get a simple, durable, and especially cheap bike lift, you can't go wrong with this one. I'm gonna put a link down below where you can find it, but that's more for reference because prices vary so much that you have to do five minutes of Google searches and you'll probably find one that's quite a bargain. I paid 40 bucks for this and it's worth every penny. I didn't regret it once. So maybe it's time for a new bike lift. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.